Welcome back everyone. Recently we reviewed the Vision Tech RX 470 and found it was a pretty good card for the money, uh, provided you could find it at the right price point. Well, we wanted to take it a step further and based on the TDP of the card and the fact that it was a reference cooler, I've been really wanting to try something different. So what we did was ordered up the Arctic Accelero S3 Silent Cooler. So this is a fully passive cooler. You can see it's got a very large heat sink on the top very large back plate on the bottom and well that's really about all there is to it there's no fans it's uh, designed for a lower TDP graphics card and originally I thought about doing it with the GTX 1060 uh, founders edition but because of the pigtail with the power connector it really wasn't going to work out so I wanted to get the review out of the way for the RX 470 and this showed up just as I finished that up so it was actually great timing. Now in installation of this is not exactly the easiest thing in the world. It took quite a while of course you've got to remove the reference cooler or whatever cooling solutions on your graphics card and clean all that off which takes not very much time at all but you had to find of course the right mounting holes, the right um, spacers for the standoffs and one of the problems that I ran into with this graphics card was this doesn't actually officially support the Polaris chips because their Z height is a little bit different and a little bit lower than something like the HD7870 which is a very similar uh, chip size. But after a good while of assembly and fighting and very meticulous cutting of pieces to go on the back plate for the thermal pads and the plastic sheet that goes between the back plate and the GPU it's, or the graphics card itself to protect it from shorting out. We finally got it all together and well you know I know a lot of people are like oh a passively cooled RX 470 you know, we've seen RX 460s come on the market that are passively cooled, and those are, I mean, we're talking really low, like subset or 75 watt or lower TDP on those chips, so that makes a lot of sense, but does it really make a lot of sense to passively cool this? Well, what I've got behind me going is multiple runs of uh, Metro Last Light at 1080p, very high, whatever, and we're going to see how the temperatures are on there and while we're looking at that we're going to talk about something a little different with the temperatures and what I found really interesting. So let's jump over and take a look at that. Alright so here we are looking at Metro Last Light. Now I've got MSI Afterburner pulled up and so we can take a look at the temperatures. Now you'll notice um, the temp temperature there is 75C and the core clock is 1200 is over 1200 and, and the the significance of that is if you look back at the review and well i'll just go ahead and tell you the temperature with the reference cooler sat around 80 c so about five to six degrees celsius warmer while running games and benchmarks now i will say after the highest that I saw it was I played about two and a half hours of um, Darksiders 2 and it got up to about 76C. But let, let's take a look at what really makes that kind of impressive. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take my side panel off of my case here. Then Now, before I do that, I am going to exit out of the game because something to keep in mind is with passive coolers like that, you really want to make sure that the side panels on so that the case is getting adequate airflow. So we're going to take this off and you can see it sitting in there while it's running, no fans. See, we've got nothing on the graphics card here. Nothing under it, nothing over it. It is warm to the touch, which is good. That means we're getting thermal dissipation. So it's hot, it's pulling heat away from it. Now I'm going to pop the front of the front cover of the case off just so that I can show you what we've got going on here. Because I know with it being cooled by the case airflow, the question of what fans are being used I'm sure somebody has that. Now as far as the top, we've got the Cooler Master Master Liquid Pro 240 up there and a stock Cooler Master 140mm fan on the back. Again, there's a graphics card with no fans whatsoever on it. But you come around to the front here, we've got two stock Cooler Master 140mm fans. 
that are obviously turning pretty slow. They're only going about 900 RPM. Yeah, so I tell you what, one, one thing that I really wanted to do while doing this was take a look at a performance delta to see if the it actually performs better in games than it did with the stock one. So we're just gonna look at a, just a few different games here and then we'll get to the conclusion. Well, there you have it guys. In the end, it actually performs cooler and runs faster than it did on the reference cooler. That was definitely not something that I was expecting to see. I was honestly really kind of nervous of whether this was gonna work or not because of the time and effort that went into it and the fact that it didn't fit properly and had to do a little bit of a adjustment. So really cool that it worked literally really cool that it worked but um that's been it for today if you'd like to see more feel free to subscribe and like and if you got any questions feel free to comment and we'll catch you guys all in the next video